This video is more of a travel video on the trip back from Aurora, Colorado. We ended up taking an alternate route and I've got some actually really beautiful stuff in here. So, so stick with it. I think you're going to enjoy this. So if you follow my channel, you know that you never know what you're going to get. I talk about trees and tree care and in every video I try to at least uh, talk about trees to some extent. But on this particular video, this is a journey that I'm going on. I drove from California all the way out to outside of Denver, Colorado, and I showed some of the sites along the way. And now we're on our way back and I'm doing an alternate route. I decided to head over towards Bryce Canyon. And uh, we're kind of near the entrance to Bryce Canyon. I'm getting an early start. But on the way out here, there was a fire. So the map diverted us to some off-roads and we were going through the middle of nowhere for the longest time. And I ran across this guy that I want to show you. It's only a minute long, but I was totally amazed by this Japanese guy on a bicycle that was taking a tour that I could not believe. And remember, we're in the middle of a heat wave. Yeah, it was hot and it got hotter. And we're at the, getting into the Rocky Mountains coming out of Colorado and there was a lot of trees in here. And the first thing I wanted to talk about was the number of dying conifers that I'm seeing even out here. It's, uh, it's pretty sad. It's like all across the country, everywhere I see the forests. Some of them look pretty good. Some of them are looking pretty scattered. And in this case, there's areas where there are quite a few dead trees interspersed with the living ones. It's, um, it's, it's kind of a sad state of affairs, but not only are we suffering from drought, but we're suffering from insect problems. Then I got up into the high desert, and some of the trees up there were principally the junipers. And some of these trees are amazing. They're ancient. They don't get very big, but they're ancient trees, really, really slow growing. We saw a lot of very unusual areas, a lot of canyons, uh, this was kind of like a slot canyon that went down through here that traveled for miles. That's one of the larger uh, junipers I saw in this area. Oh, hi, what's your name? Leo. And, and tell me what you're doing. So, I'm from Japan. I'm cycling from oh, Anchorage, Alaska. Anchorage, Alaska? Yeah, down to Argentina. Oh my God, how long have you been riding this bike? So far, I started cycling in Anchorage on April 10th, so it's been three months. Three months you've been yeah. all by yourself? Yeah. Wow. Have you had any hardships on the road? Yeah, like the heat like this. Yeah. Where in Alaska, it was very cold. I'll bet. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got all your gear in this little setup here. Yes, this is my moving house. Wow. The clothes for winter, tent, the cooking stuff. This is gasoline. I see that. And then you've got two things in the front. Yeah. I am so impressed. It was a pleasure meeting you, man. Good luck on your journey. Thank you. That guy really impressed me. We got out into the Badlands and I saw what looked like the start of a funnel cloud and lots and lots of areas with virtually no trees for the longest time. Treeless landscape for such a long time, but the rocks were beautiful. It was uh, quite the distance to get out here and this is all before we got to Bryce Canyon. As I said before, we had to take an alternate route. And what was interesting was there was virtually no cars out here. It was, uh, it was like nobody on the road. And I thought if we break down, we're, you know, we had no cell signal either. The longest ways. Then the rocks started to uh, form up a little bit and the color of the rocks changed a little bit. And I knew I was getting closer to what Bryce Canyon was like. If you've never been to Bryce Canyon, I'm going to say you've got to give it a try. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful trip. But if you do it, go first thing in the morning before the crowds. Because we got up at, at daybreak and I saw bunches and bunches of tour buses. This isn't even Bryce Canyon. It's starting to get really beautiful. This was really cool. There was like a, another big canyon that went down here. I went over to the edge of it. I was just off of one of the uh, one of the rest areas in Utah. Quite 
pretty. You can imagine this being a flash flood area. Lots and lots of color. Some more of the junipers. Oh, we ran out of gas, almost ran out of gas. We were out in the middle of nowhere and I had no idea where the next gas station was. And it kept going and going. We got down, it said we had like 28 miles left on the tank. And we finally got to Bryce. That beautiful stone fireplace was from a uh, hotel that's kind of near the entrance to Bryce Canyon. So the way it works is you can go hiking in here, but we opted to do the drive. It's about a 15 mile drive. Look at that archway, that bridge right there. That's amazing. And if you do it, go first thing in the morning. You get to see the sunrise hit all these rock formations. And it was outstanding. It was just, you know, as the light was moving and opening up through the clouds, little beams of light would come in. And pictures just don't do this place justice. It was truly well worth the trip. It was a little bit out of our way, not, not too far out of our way. As I said before, I took uh, Highway uh, 80 through Reno and through the desert out that way to get to Denver area. And then I, we took Highway 70 on the way back. Um, it, it was uh, both trips were about the same distance. Maybe 70 was a little bit longer because of the detour. But uh, oh, I, I was just mesmerized. And because it was first thing in the morning, um, we didn't have any crowds. Nobody was up there. There were a lot of high altitude pines and spruce trees. And there was even some bristlecone pines up here. We were at about 11,000 foot elevation. I'm forever in awe of some of the amazing sights that our country offers. Look at that beam there. Oh, that was so beautiful. Timing is really important when you want to see places. You know, if you go to visit and the crowds are all around you, it goes for Yosemite or any of the spectacular big parks, you're going to be somewhat disappointed because crowds can ruin the experience. But first thing in the morning, oh, I can't emphasize that enough. Get up early. Get out there. See what it's like. The first light that hit these cliffs just made everything glow. So we spent about two hours on this 15 mile drive up to this high elevation lookout. And then we came to the end of the lookout and there was just a big turnaround so we took our time back, and unfortunately, the crowd started coming in as we were going down. So I was very grateful that I got off and headed in that direction first thing. Ah, I, I just, I love seeing these beautiful parks. We are so fortunate to have these parks. Ah, the sky was beautiful, the clouds were beautiful, but we were on our way into a very hot journey. We also went to another place. It was called Red Rocks. It was on the way out of the park. It was further down, and there were a lot of really interesting rock formations. My wife and I went for a bit of a hike out there. There were some rock formations out there that were balanced and very precarious looking. Oh, I found some bristlecone pine trees. This one was laying on the ground, and you could just see the age in the, the wood itself. There was a lot of junipers and a lot of other pines and ancient old trees. Look at that thing up there. That's just, that's just amazing. There's a dead pine of some sort. I'm not quite sure what kind of pine. Oh, those cliffs are just... Truly remarkable. Look at that. That one, I don't know what's holding that up. I don't know why that's still standing. Because the base of that thing is barely even there. <laughs> the sun was lighting up the cliffs again. 
This was probably about 10 o'clock in the morning. We only spent a couple of hours in Bryce. We spent about an hour here. There was also very few people in this park, so we kind of had the whole place to ourselves. After this, we headed off towards Zion National Park. And I remember Zion from about 40 years ago, but I was surprised that when I got there, it was entirely different than what I expected. Here we are hiking out of Red Rocks. This is my lovely wife, Gina. Hope you're enjoying this. Look at that. I don't know why that's still standing. That, that just blows my mind. There was a piece of bristlecone pine that was cut off, and I counted about 300 rings in that small piece of wood. Bristlecone pines, as you are probably aware, can live up to 5,000 years. Here we are in Zion. I didn't do a lot of video in Zion because this was primarily just a drive through. But what was really interesting about this particular park was there's a, a tunnel that's quite long. It's, it's at least a mile long that, grow, that goes through solid rock. Do you see that hole up there at the bottom there? That's where the tunnel is. There's a bunch of ventilation holes. But the tunnel drove all the way through that and then it meandered down into this little valley in here where we're driving right now. So we just pretty much just kind of drove through. There's very few spots to stop in Zion unless you get off and do one of the hikes. Oh, this is cool. We're getting really close to Las Vegas and I saw these lights in the desert and I could not figure out what they were. So I looked it up and it turns out that there are mirrors that are focused on these sources at the top where water heats up and there's steam-powered generators to produce electricity. I don't know how efficient it is, but I've never seen that before. Okay, here, we've got more trees out there. These are called Joshua trees, and it got hotter than that even. That was 113. Oh, we saw a nasty accident. A truck slammed into the back end of another truck and completely demolished the trailer. Now we're getting out into an area where there are a lot of oak trees out here. This is back into California. We're getting closer to home. A lot of California looks like this, big wide open areas. And if you look out there, what do you not see? You don't see many small trees because this is cattle country. And we're at the end of the trip. We ended up driving all night through the heat. Made it home about 2 o'clock in the morning. <sighs> it was a long drive. 